Hello. Welcome to Friendship Moments here at Friendship Baptist Church. Tonight, my devotional is entitled, The Truth Isn't a Shade of Gray. And it comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter, verses 30. It says, I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would have that so so I would not have to destroy it, but I have found no one. You know, in this verse, God describes the moral condition of the Jewish nation. And the prophets had entered into a conspiracy of not preaching the truth, and thus they would only preach what was popular and what was positive, and, you know, just for the sake of material gain for themselves. And uh, in verse 25, it says, I will direct my jealous anger against you, and they will deal with you in fury. In other words, the enemy he was going to send to them was going to cut off their ears and their noses. Well, the priests weren't any better, for they failed to make a clear distinction between the clean and the unclean, or the holy and the common. In other words, they permitted a state of moral uncertainty where everything was a shade of gray. God had searched, but he could not find any man who would arise as a moral leader and stand in the gap and thus rebuild the moral wall that protected Judah from judgment. Morality is like a wall that shields people from divine wrath. Yet where that wall breaks down, judgment enters. When I read this verse of God's people during the time of Ezekiel, it brings to mind the moral condition of our country today. More and more religious groups are confirming to the ways of the culture. More modern churches are preaching what is popular and what feels good and what is pleasing to their ears. It seems like there is a deliberate conspiracy to avoid preaching God's truth or to keep his truth hidden. In Romans 1.18, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. You know, every generation needs men and women to form a spiritual remnant. We always need men who will roll up their sleeves and get busy restoring the old paths. Too many of our children and even our grandchildren have been brought up in homes where God is never mentioned. Where work and hobbies seem to be the number one priority. You know, time out for families should include leading the family in some sort of a devotional and talking with your children about God and about your relationship with God. And children need to hear their father's telling them how good God is and how God has taken care of him and how God's ways are pleasant and how God can always be trusted. Children also need to hear their father praying for them and for other members of their family and try to be specific about it. It seems as though unspiritual people, when they are challenged about a certain behavior, like whether there's drinking a beer or watching that R-rated movie that you shouldn't be watching. They always have a knee-jerk reaction and say something like, are you saying that that might send me to hell? Well, men that stand in the gap have an even more important question. Does this manifest a hunger, a desire, a devotion, or an affection and a passion for God? Or does it manifest a lack of interest, enthusiasm, a lack of concern, or a coolness toward his holiness and his will. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of being a parent. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to stand in the gap for my children. You promised me, God, that once I raise my children with the fear of the Lord, they will, they will walk upright. I pray for those who are living in opposition to God through their unhealthy lifestyle pride and rebellion. I pray for your church that in the word God may be preached in truth and in honor to you. I pray for this little church by the road that we not only preach and teach the word, but that we have the courage and the desire to stand in the gap for you. I thank you for what you're doing for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.